Hey everyone, it's Nick with Duality Repair, and this is a faulty NAD3240PE stereo amplifier. Let's go over some basic electronic troubleshooting techniques and get this repaired. The first thing we need to do is to clearly define the problem or problems. And when I say clearly define, I mean the more details the better. So in our case, although we do have power, we get absolutely no output. And when I say no output, I mean no output from either speaker A or speaker B and no output no matter what input we use, CD or phono or tuner or videotape too. Those are actually critical details that we need to have. Now that we've defined the problem, we next want to try to localize it. You can see just how many components, dozens if not hundreds, go into a stereo amplifier like this NAD. Our goal will be to narrow down our suspect pool to one or two or three components, as few as possible. One way to do that is to attempt to recognize specific sections of the circuit isolate them and then test them individually. So in this case we have a power supply section, we have a phono and preamp section, and then we have a power amp section. So you can think of it as three basic sections. One way to conveniently and easily rule out a big chunk of this circuit is to simply bypass your preamp section. Instead of injecting your audio in one of these inputs, go straight into your power amplifier section. So let's do that now. I have a sine wave injected into each channel's power amplifier circuit, and if we take a look at the oscilloscope, we can see a great signal from both channels. So we can actually rule out the entire power amplifier circuitry. We've eliminated the entire power amplifier section, and we're actually also able to eliminate both phono sections, because we know our issue is occurring on all inputs and not just those two inputs. So that leaves just the power supply section and the preamp section. Next, I'd like to try and rule out the power supply section. This is going to be very easy because the only two voltages that are fed into the preamp are fed to this op amp here. It's going to be the plus and minus 20 volts from this power supply section right here. So ideally, I'd measure the emitter of this transistor and the emitter of this transistor, and we should see plus and minus 20 volts respectively. So let's see if that's what we get. Due to space constraints, I'm unable to measure at those transistors, but we can measure downstream. So we're going to start with this resistor right here. This is R311. This should be the positive 20 volt supply, and we're at positive 19.9 volts. No problem there. Now let's take a look at this resistor. This is R312. This should be the negative 20 volt supply, and we're at negative 20.0 on the dot. Fantastic. So we can rule out the entire power supply section. With the power supply section eliminated, that leaves only the preamp section. So we've done a great job localizing so far. Let's see if we can go just a little bit further. Now we need to take advantage of the fact that both channels are behaving the same. That is, we get no output from either channel. So that means we should be looking for something that's common to both channels. And what jumps out at me is this op amp here. This op amp, IC301, is shared by both preamp sections. So let's focus our attention on this op amp. Here's the op amp in question, IC301. So we verified the plus and minus 20 volts is present at the power supply section, but we want to make sure that we're getting the appropriate voltage at the op amp itself. According to the schematic, pin H should be 14.3 volts, pin 4 should be minus 14.3 volts, so let's see if that's what we get. Here's pin 8, and we're only getting about 52 millivolts, that is not good. Let's go to pin 4. Pin 4 is minus 18.2 volts, so neither of those are correct. Let's go back to the schematic. We're zoomed in on one of the preamp channels now, and I believe we've been able to localize this problem down to one or a combination of these five components. So of course the op amp itself could be faulty, but I think we'll check that last. I also have these two resistors and these two capacitors circled, and I'll explain why. We've already verified we have our supplies, positive 20 volts here, negative 20 volts here, no problem. But on the other side of these resistors, we're not getting what we expect. So this should be positive 14.3 volts, we're getting almost zero. This should be negative 14.3 volts, we're getting negative 18 and some change. So we need to inspect these two resistors, R311 and R312. We also can't forget about these two capacitors, C311 and C312. These are smoothing out the positive and negative 14.3 volts respectively, so we'll have to check those as well. Both R311 and R312 should be 1K or 1000 ohms. This is R311, we're measuring right around 980 ohms, no problem there. R312 also measuring right around 980 ohms. So the resistors are fine, let's move on to the capacitors.
Here's one of our two capacitors. This should be 100 microfarad. Even with a tolerance of 20%, this should read no worse than 80 microfarad on the low end. You can see we're reading around 20, so this capacitor is bad. Let's check the other one. Our second capacitor here isn't even registering a capacitance at all, so both of these are bad. Let's take a look at a direct replacement. This is a 100 microfarad at 25 volt Nichicon capacitor. Let's see what it should be measuring at. 103, very, very close to spec. Both capacitors have been replaced here and here, so let's see what we get now. This is pin 8 of the op amp, and we're at about positive 15.35 volts. And here's pin 4, we're at negative 15.34 volts. Fantastic. So that's much, much closer to what we'd expect. So it's very possible that just those two capacitors is what was preventing this amp from working properly, but there could be other issues, so let's see if this will pass a signal. All right, we have a sine wave this time injected into the tuner input. So we're using both the preamp and power amp sections. We'll turn it on, turn up the volume, see what we get. And look at that. We have a nice clean output from both channels. It's working, fantastic. Well, that was fun. Although an amplifier like this would normally receive some additional servicing, such as replacing all of the electrolytic capacitors, cleaning and reapplying new thermal compound, and going over the DC offset and bias adjustments, we were able to resolve the main issue by going through some very basic electronic troubleshooting techniques. So thanks for watching.